in a marriage, maybe one person is accommodating the other. I think in this case, it's the disengaged critical withdrawer. Oh, accommodating the, his partner, placating. Placating, accommodating. They come to therapy because the person is done accommodating. What do you do from there? So wife is used to husband accommodating. Husband is done accommodating and is starting to assert himself. Yeah. And the wife is more distressed because she's not getting her way. Is that too simple? That's what the therapist is saying. I can get her to go with me and talk about her fears, but he keeps coming back to, I don't care. Maybe EFT isn't for us. Uh huh. So he's really done accommodating. It's too costly on him. Yes. And it sounds like it's not changing his wife's behavior. Just go out and drink. Don't do this behavior. Don't do that. And uh -huh. he can like follow her rules so that uh -huh. she feels safe, but he doesn't want to do that anymore. Right on with Rar. So in a way, I would have to frame it for the couple that even though this is very distressing for both of you, this is a sign of our progress. We used to teach withdrawal re-engagement as help the withdrawer feel entitled to their experience. Love that. And in some cases, help the withdrawer assert him or herself. So on the one hand, I would be validating the withdrawer. He's taking a huge risk. And maybe it's only out of pure, like he's a boxer in the ring and his back is up against the ropes. And his only option is to come out asserting himself. Then I would want to work with the wife. What happens on the inside of her? Her husband is asserting himself. And what happens to the wife? Like it feels to me she doesn't have a template for her own safety being part of the husband and his developing personality and his integration of himself as a more emotionally mature person. What happens to the wife? It feels like this part of her crumbles. Like I would want to work right there. The husband can't keep accommodating. He can't live by the wife's rules. He's not going to be a viable, partner because he there isn't any space for him accommodating doesn't work over time. it doesn't no and it can work temporarily for a short-term specific reason but the accommodating isn't actually helping the wife either it's a pseudo safety it's a pseudo decrease of panic and that's no way for her to live either, because the second he stops accommodating, as is happening, her panic, her fear, her crumble, whatever the better words are, is right there. And so let's actually go to that nub and get revision right there, because you don't have to live this way. That's, that's a metabolically exhausting way to live, that if I'm this woman, I have to arrange my life with so much vigilance about what my partner needs to do to keep me in equilibrium. Ah, agonizing. There's so many ways that we as humans try to avoid our pain and so true. also make it worse. That's so true. Part of what you're saying is she needs to stay in contact with that pain that she tries to mitigate by getting him to accommodate her. Yeah, and giving him rules. Can't can't drink. I forget exactly what you said, but you know, if he's an alcoholic, yeah. But short of that, like, wait, we are grown adults who need a certain degree of anonymity, autonomy, self-efficacy. So I would be encouraging the husband and helping him learn like what's healthy assertion and when does it go too far and he catches her off guard. Maybe encourage this couple to talk process more like where the husband would say to his wife, in the past, when you would tell me those things, I would placate. But remember, we're in a new era, new paradigm. I'm unable to placate. Kate right now and I can't agree to that, but I want to talk with you. I want to reassure you. I want to remind you how much I love you, but I'm actually not able to do what you're expecting me to do. We put it in attachment terms and help him reassure her. It sounds like he's already doing that, but as he's saying, it doesn't work. And talking process so that they get a quick connection and bonding moment instead of him just asserting maybe bluntly or boldly and then going out to have that beer, leaving her home alone in her panic. That's not what we're suggesting is asserting or entitled the withdrawer. We're saying be relational, but definitely take up space in your marriage. Take up emotional and psychological space in your marriage withdrawer. That's really important. When you say help the withdrawer feel entitled to their experience, in this case, he would get to be entitled to his experience, but it doesn't mean too bad, wife, deal with your fear. I'm going to go out with my friends. It means that maybe, yes, he'll go out with his friends, but on an emotional level, he'll help her hold her fear. 
Yeah, and he cares for her and he soothes her and reassures as much as he can. And they work together to create a process, a very simple process of connecting so that she starts experiencing his assertions, not as abandonment, which most likely she's going to be privy to, predisposed to, or fearful of real or perceived there's some version of abandonment and he wants to reassure her. So this is where he asserts himself, but keeps working on behalf of the marriage as he connects with her in his assertion. And she does the same. Each partner has to be working on behalf of the relationship and taking protective actions, protecting the relationship's bond. Right. Right. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.